On this week's Eastern Conference edition of the Locked On NHL podcast, the playoff matchups are set. As we await confirmation out West, we can already preview the four series that we will see. This all stems after a hectic Tuesday night where teams were eliminated at the crack of midnight. So what's next for the Pittsburghs, Detroits of the world? We'll discuss all that and more on today's edition of the Locked On NHL Podcast. Your team, every day. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team, every day. Welcome to the Locked On NHL Podcast, your team every day. I'm Ross Levitan. You can find me five days a week over at Locked On Ottawa Senators. As always, it is the Battle of Ontario edition from Locked On Maple Leafs. It is Mike DiStefano, and we've got all four Eastern playoff matchups set. And if you want to go see any of the games, make sure to check out Game Time. Go download the Game Time app. Create an account and use code Locked On NHL. You'll get twenty dollars off your first ticketing purchase. This episode is brought to you by Game Time. Code Locked On NHL gets you twenty dollars off your first purchase. Mike, it is playoffs time. Which one catches your attention most outside of your obvious connection to Toronto? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I've got uh, an allegiance with the Toronto Maple Leafs, so I'll be watching the Leafs Bruins series pretty closely. But I do think it's going to be a great one. I mean, anytime you can get an original six matchup, you love it. And there's so much history in Leafs Bruins, obviously. But I mean, the 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 showdown in the Sunshine State is going to be a terrific matchup. I mean, you've got Florida and Tampa; those two had a, a series a couple of years back, and it was amazing uh, uh so i think that i think it was like the first big like the first time that hockey came coming out of the pandemic had like full buildings and it was just electric absolutely electric i love every second of it so that's probably the one that i'm looking forward to most outside of least boston here in round one is, is going to be the the panthers lightning round one series and Tampa's starting to play some of their best hockey, have been really since the trade deadline. Andre Vasilevsky back, and albeit a little slump the last two games, but I'm looking at the bigger picture here and what they've been able to do since around, yeah, basically they got beat by Philly pretty badly at the end of uh, February, and since then uh, have been one of the better teams in the league. I just think they, they stumbled upon a poor matchup. I actually would have liked Tampa more if they snuck into a matchup against one of the other two teams in the Atlantic in either Tampa and I know or sorry not Tampa obviously in terms of Boston or uh, I don't think this was as likely but I like them against Toronto uh, I know they lost last year in the first round against the Leafs but for me the Florida Panthers are going to win whoever they play in the first round which means to me I'm looking at the series where I feel an upset can occur the 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 favorites right now to win the Stanley Cup plus 550 at FanDuel the Carolina Hurricanes. I'm going against it, Mikey. I'm going against the Canes. I'm riding with the boring old Islanders. Patty Waugh back in the playoffs. A team that had so many overtime losses snuck in on the back door, but they are built for the playoffs. They are going to slug it up. All Carolina wants to do is use speed, use open ice, create have No, the Islanders are going to play them just like they play on defense and just turn this one into an all-time under affair. I'm taking yeah. the Islanders in six games over Carolina. No, I, I think this is going to be, like, this might be a sweep, honestly. Uh, uh, Canes, I, I I love Carolina in this one. That's a, that's a bold take there, Rossi, a bold take. But I look at these two teams, Carolina and New York, and, I mean, the Hurricanes have that structure that's not going to allow – the Islanders to really penetrate uh, their defense and they can't really score anyway. So I think you're right when you say it'll be a low scoring affair, but I think we're looking more like, you know, four, one, four, two victories for the Carolina hurricanes. 
The New York Islanders have basically been playing playoff hockey for the last month. They've had to win almost every single game, really, since Patrick Watt took over. He had sure. that tough losing streak right when he got in. But, dude, this team's 8-1-1 one, and one in their last 10, all in must-win back-against-their-wall games. No, we're riding with the Isles, baby. All right, we'll see. We'll see. That's, that's You're taking one. a four-game sweep? Wow, well, maybe not a I, I, Or I'm a four-game. Carolina. Or a four-game non-sweep, since we're talking about Carolina. Rod Brindamore gets to decide after. Yeah, exactly. So a non-sweep sweep. Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm going with. A non-sweep sweep. Okay. Uh, you mentioned the Boston-Toronto series. We should uh, conclude that one with a couple picks. And I actually like the Leafs in it. I, I hate to to go against my, my blood. I, I have been known to maybe choose with my heart over my brain, but I'm not doing it here. The Bruins just have not been that impressive to me outside of David Pasternak and their goaltending. I do feel like this is a team that is set up to be knocked out for the first round once again. So I'm going Leafs in six. I think if it gets a seven, the uh, old demons of years past might come out to haunt the Leafs. But if they can get it done in six, I think that would be good for them to do at home. Yeah, I, 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 I haven't done my deep dive quite yet just because leading up until I guess last night, most of Leafs fans were just gearing up for a Leafs Panthers uh, battle again. And then last night, Boston somehow loses to Ottawa. The Panthers beat Toronto and now it's a flip in the standings on the last night uh, for them. And now it's going to be Leafs Bruins. I'll say this, though. Uh, I do prefer the matchup against the Bruins over the Florida Panthers. I think Toronto has a much better chance at beating Boston. I'm not saying they will beat Boston, but between the two, I think that should be the more preferred matchup. Now, Florida was the preferred matchup last year. Uh, we when want Boston Florida. Exactly, exactly. So, again, it doesn't really mean anything once you get to the playoffs. And, look, there's a lot of really talented players that are battle-tested on that Bruins squad. But I still can't help but look at that center core down the middle and think, like, that's not a cup-winning core. Like, that's not Bergeron, Krejci level, uh, you know, down the middle. Like, as as good as Pablo Zaka's been, he's he ain't no Bergeron. So, um, shutting down Matthews, I think, is going to be a bit of a task for those guys. And the way the Leafs have been scoring lately, they've got kind of three lines cooking uh, right now. So I like what's going on in Toronto. Um, the biggest challenge is going to be stopping Pasternak and defensively the goaltending, like those are going to be the question marks. Uh, unlike the Islanders and Carolina games, I think we'll see some high scoring games here between Boston and Toronto. Okay. I do have to put the caveat in Noah Dobson needs to play for the Islanders. They need their number one. Uh, defense. That would be okay. preferred. That would yeah, be preferred, he, yes. He missed the game Monday, upper body, but it, it's not looking long-term. I don't think so. I, I'm still confident in that. But that's definitely my my seism, seismic take of uh, of my first-round picks. I think everything else is – that's probably the longest odd series, though, too, in the Eastern Conference. Would it not be? I would imagine. Mm -hmm. I haven't or, No, no. Rangers, Rangers have to be pretty big favorites. We'll get to that series on the yeah. other side, but over, over Washington. I would imagine that would be the case. I mean, Washington just snuck in by the, the skin of their teeth and maybe the grimiest way possible. Uh, I don't know if you want to get into that now or get into it on the other side, but uh, I am happy that OV is going to be making a playoff push. I preferred, you know, one of Pittsburgh or Washington to win that final spot over a team like the Detroit uh, Red Wings or the Philadelphia Flyers. So at least we get to see one of the legends try and make uh, another Stanley Cup run here. FanDuel has it pretty close in terms of how big of an underdog both the Islanders and Capitals are in the first round. The Isles are plus 275. The Capitals plus 290. The eight versus number one seed, the President's Trophy winning New York Rangers. Get some stick taps in the mix there. Last year's President's Trophy team eliminated in round one. So the yeah. Rangers will hope to do one Better. On the other side, plenty to discuss. As Mikey said, we'll get into some more series and we'll talk about the end of the regular season. Just how awesome having three games that mattered were on at the same time. All that next. You're listening to Locked On NHL, your team every day. 
Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the official ticketing app of the Locked On Podcast Network. Go check them out ahead of your next live event. I'm talking about sports in general, whether it's hockey, baseball, football, basketball, even concerts, theater. You can get tickets for anything at Game Time. And because if you're new to Game Time, maybe you don't know how it works. Now, why Game Time is the place to go when you need to get new tickets for your live event is because they have competitive pricing. It the game time guarantee means that if you find tickets in the same section and row for less, you will get 110% of the difference because at game time, it is all about getting the best deal on the best uh, seats. And you can even see where your seats are at game time. You can get the view from your seat. They've also got killer last minute deals all in pricings and you can take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on NHL for $20 off your first purchase terms. Apply again, create an account and use code locked on NHL L O C K E D O N N H L for $20 off download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Welcome back. Locked on NHL. I'm Ross Levitan. That is Mike DiStefano. We are here as local experts on the biggest stories, but for more on any team that we discuss on the Eastern Conference side, we do have a show specific for that team with 30-minute episodes Monday through Friday, your team every day. I'm Ross Levitan. You can find me over at Locked on Senators, and that is Mike DiStefano from Locked on Maple Leafs. What are you going to be talking about for the next couple of months, Drossy? No more games until, uh, well, I guess, what, late September? We'll start to get a couple of games in for you. I'm just trying to get the Belleville Sens to playoffs. That's what, that's where we're at right now. But we obviously got a ton of draft talk. Sens going to have a top 10 pick. And I will be going to the draft this year with Pilsy. So uh, we're going to really sink our teeth into that. So that'll be Ooh. fun. But yeah, the right boys. now we're, we're, we're working on a five-part eulogy right now, Mikey. We'll have Jamie Noodles McLennan. We'll have Mark Mathot. We'll have Dean Brown, the play-by-play voice the Sens on radio. So uh, I'm going to try to get some other people to talk about all the glaring issues that everyone knows what's wrong with this team. It's how do you go about fixing them? I I just can't help but think how dangerous it's going to be you and Pilsy down in Vegas together. <laughs> Oh, it's going to be a time. You know, the draft is at the sphere, too. I know. I know. That's It's going to be interesting to see how they utilize it. Um, but that's a couple months down the road. We've got... Or uh, tomorrow, lo- Locked On Senators. Check it out. Or tomorrow on the Locked On Senators. <laughs> but uh, for those teams that are still in the hunt for Lord Stanley's mug, <clears throat> the Maple Leafs, uh, there are more pressing needs to get to prior to uh, draft night at the sphere. Ross. I don't think you ever gave me a pick for uh, for Leaf Spruins. No, and I'm not going to give a pick on the show. I will give my official pick on the Locked On Leafs podcast on Friday. Okay, so you got to tune into Locked On Leafs. Okay, well I said Leafs in six, so there you have it. And I'm going with uh, the Rangers over the Capitals. Uh, it's very big of me. You can't <laughs> take both ridiculous underdogs. Yeah, no, I'm 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 also taking the Rangers in this one. I think uh, as awesome as it is to see Ovechkin making the playoffs, but you know you look at that goal differential; it's actually staggering to me <laughs> that we have a team in the playoffs with a minus thirty-seven goal differential. Uh, it's gross. So I think the Rangers, who have one of the best goal differentials in the NHL, should be able to make some pretty quick work of uh, of of uh, Ovechkin and his Capitals. The Ottawa Senators have a plus 11 goal differential better than the final playoff team. Just to put it in perspective where Washington sits at minus wow. 37. That is, that's I mean, remarkable the teams, that they were able the to two, get in. It is. It really is. Considering the two teams that they were able to beat to get in are plus four and plus five. So, and I mean, the Flyers, the Sabre, legitimately, they have the third worst goal differential in the East and somehow still made the playoffs. Only the Montreal Canadiens and Columbus Blue Jackets have a worse goal differential than the Washington Capitals. 
truly remarkable, but Charlie Lindgren's been awesome for them in, in net, and uh, Ovi's just been continually doing his yeah. thing ever since the All-Star break. He came back a new man, and uh, he is racing towards Wayne Gretzky's NHL record. To me, that is one of the underlying best storylines of the 23. I mean, about the finish for the wild card, you talk about the Hart Trophy race that, uh, you know, has been ongoing. And I still think there's a big going to be a huge debate up until that trophy's given out for the MVP. But one of the more underlying stories is the midseason turnaround of Alex Ovechkin. I mean, we came on this podcast right before the All-Star break and, you know, contemplated maybe Ovi doesn't get to, to Gretzky's record. It looks like he's slowing down. He only had nine goals in 44 games prior to the All-Star break. Since then, 22 goals in 35 games to close out the season and drag his team into the playoffs. Just an uh, outstanding stuff from uh from a 30, was he 38, 39 year old Alex Ovechkin? Outrageous. In his last 46 games. So from uh, December 30th on, he's got 40, he's a point per game player, 45 points in 46 games. It's uh, yeah. truly remarkable what he's been able to do. But unfortunately, he's going up against an amazing team in the New York yeah. Rangers. They just have so much depth, so much continuity too. Like they've had that Trocheck, Panera, and Lafreniere line out there all season long. They've played more minutes together than any other combination in the National Hockey League this year. And I mean, Panarin in any other year would be a heart candidate. There's just five guys who are probably ahead of him this year. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And I believe we had, I don't know if we had a wager, but we definitely threw out an over-under this season on uh, Alexi Lafreniere. Uh, I think we put at 49 and a half whether or not he was going to have his first 50 point season. I think I took the over and I think you took the under buddy. Whoa. And Alexi Lafreniere finished the season with 57 points. That's pretty impressive. He's been good all year. He has, he, I mean, a little bit. Well, quiet. Playing. Oh, he's, he's playing. He's not on the fourth line. Like Jar Gallant cemented him too for the last two years. He's actually getting a chance to play with the bread man and make some plays and score some goals. 28 goals this year for Lafreniere. Yeah, really impressive. Good for him. He's uh, hopefully going to be, you know, one of those guys that can live up to first overall pick and help Team Canada down the road. Because, uh, man, I'm just excited. Like, you see the names too. And again, what do I have to look forward to here outside looking in playoffs? World Championships going to have some pretty decent rosters this year by the looks of it. So, oh, Connor yeah. Bedard. Well, Laffy won't, won't be part of it. But no, not Lafreniere, but going going forward beyond that. I'm just getting myself yeah. fired up. Four nations next year, Olympics the year after. Hell yeah. About time we got some best on best hockey. All right, Mikey. The night that was Detroit, Philadelphia, kind of. Well, they thought they had a chance. Otherwise, they wouldn't have pulled the goalie. And then right. Pittsburgh doesn't even get their ultimate chance. They're eliminated because of everything that happened last night. We'll get into the, the depths of it and are we going to see maybe another coaching change like we saw in Buffalo the other day? We'll get into all that on the other side. This is Locked On NHL, your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by Monopoly Go. I've been told I'm a pretty competitive person. I mean, Ross, do you think that's true? So true. Yeah, honestly, it, it's, it is very true. We do get very competitive with one another. I do have a competitive side, uh, as we all do. And my competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly, and you play uh, on not only one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities that bring you big-time money. But the best part is messing around with your friends, Ross. It's always good and fun when you play Monopoly with your buddies. Uh, you can charge them rent on iconic properties, just like in classic Monopoly. But now you can also heist their vaults for riches for yourself. But it's not just the competitive side that loves it. You can team up with friends and people all around the world and in time tournaments to earn huge rewards. So get in the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store and Google Play. Welcome back. Final segment locked on NHL for 
Wednesday, April 17th, three nights away from the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs. We got lots to get to before then, but before we move past the Stanley Cup favorites, here they are, according to our friends with FanDuel. Carolina Hurricanes at plus 650 now for the Stanley Cup. The Florida Panthers at plus 750. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see all 16 teams. I'll just run through a few of the Eastern Conference teams. The New York Rangers plus 800. The Boston Bruins plus 1300. The Leafs at plus 1400. And then there is a huge gap. So the Tampa Bay Lightning, New York Islanders, and Washington Capitals especially are just enormous underdogs. So According to, to this, they really only think that the Bruins Leaf series is kind of a toss up of a team that could still have a chance. Yeah. I mean, those two are right neck and neck when it comes to the cup and, and, you know, the Leafs always get a lot of public money, which kind of ends up lowering their odds a little bit. But uh, for me, I, look, if I'm looking at value, you're staring right at the Rangers at plus 800, the fourth best odds. I kind of like those Ross and look, we are, we are Rangers fans on this show. We've always been big supporters of that team. You're giving me the fourth best odds for them to win. They, I know the presence trophy curse, but dude, that's a, that's a squad. They got out there. They've got scores. They've got defenders and they've got Igor Shesterkin playing at an elite level. And uh, they've got a pretty darn good coach who's come in and pushed all the right buttons. So to me, if I'm laying down any wager today on FanDuel uh, for a futures to win my kind of value play, I like the New York Rangers at plus 800. Good thing I got them before the season at, I believe, plus 1500. So let's go. There let's go. go. I'm go. all in on the Rangers, too. I think they're going to have a, a good playoff here. And hey, if Shesterkin can't get it done, they've got a two time Stanley Cup champ. I know over a decade ago, but the season Jonathan Quick had. I don't know if the, if the Rangers as players would have any less confidence with him in goal. The guy's been lights out all season long. But, Mike, the teams that did not get to make it here, the Detroits of the world, who did everything they could at the end. They won their final game, Mikey. But they couldn't get past the boogeyman that is the Washington Capitals. Ruined all the fun. Philadelphia, though, kind of opening the gate and saying, you want to score? Yeah, it, like the boogeyman, I think, is just like the NHL rules and the tie-breaking rules and, and you know, everything that comes of it. Like, realistically, it's it's unfortunate. You got to be sick to your stomach if you're a Red Wings fan or you're a Penguins fan and your season went up in flames because Philadelphia, in a tie game with three minutes to go, were forced to pull their goaltender in order to try and score because they had to win in regulation. Uh, in order to keep themselves alive in the playoff push. They don't care about, you know, Detroit. They don't care about the Pen Pittsburgh Penguins. They clearly only cared about themselves, as they should, I might add. And they had to, you know, pull the goaltender and try and get a goal, get to six on five. Unfortunately, it uh, it, it backfired on them, and pretty quickly, TJ Oshie ends up scoring to make it two to one, and they lose in regulation instead. And uh, the Washington Capitals going into the game were in an, uh, win an in scenario and they score on an empty net or in a tie game to take a lead. They hold the lead and they're in the playoffs. And as if you're the Pittsburgh Penguins, the Detroit Red Wings, uh, you gotta, you gotta feel for them, man. And especially Detroit. I don't know if you saw some of their post game reaction afterwards, but they were pretty gutted. I guess they found out that uh, Washington had won the game right before the shootout. So they score with three seconds left in the game to take it to overtime through overtime, having, you know, thinking to themselves, we still have a shot. It's one, one, you know, over in Philly and Washington. And then I guess after overtime, before the shootout, they were told, um, seems dumb boy. So if you win in a shootout, don't celebrate because you're not going to the playoffs, no matter what, because Washington got it done. That's unfortunate. Patty Kane gets the shootout winner, and you're like, oh, man, the Selly would have been all, all time not. if, all if he not. was. Yeah, I wonder if he's back there. It's clearly fit in well and, and put up a ton of production uh, with the Detroit Red Wings. Kind of not a freebie year for them, but one where like they expected, I'm sure, internally to take a step. 
and they were in it until the very last second. So yeah. I think when you take a, a step back, I know that the draft picks lesser, but they also have some high picks that are still kind of making their way to the NHL. They've got a stocked cupboard with Edvinson and Casper and uh, one other guy I'm, I'm blanking on the name right now, but who came over as well, uh, a high pick. Well, I know Nate Danielson's tearing it up in the dub. He's not even in the AHL system yet, but should be soon and will be an impact player. But the Detroit Red Wings are just starting to open their window. I still think they need to address goaltending. They were running out Alex Lyon probably more than they should have down the stretch. Yeah. Not they a should. huge fan of they James should Reimer. Have. I, they should yeah. have, uh, was it, um, oh, what's his name? Jesper Wallstadt in their system, but oh, yeah, they went and grabbed Sebastian Kosa instead. But yeah, well, yeah. he's still in the system. They've still got Trey Augustine, who looks like, I mean, still a long way to go for a guy who just got drafted, but he looks like he could be a player. Uh, obviously, all this was because Vili Huso was injured uh, throughout the last part of the season. But even with him, I think that that's the one area, if I'm Steve Eiserman, I'm looking at this summer. Um, probably looks like, and according to 32 Thoughts, that uh, David Perron would like to re-sign there. Uh, he's a pending uh, unrestricted free agent as well. But stick taps to Detroit, man. Honestly, they had some serious losing streaks during the season, but were able to balance that out with a few huge win streaks that were able to propel them into the position they were at. Yeah, and I think you got to be happy with the uh, the big step that a guy like Lucas Raymond took for them this year too, becoming a 30-goal scorer. He was a high pick for them, uh, you know, big four, four years ago now. Down the Dude, stretch, ma- big goals. massive goals, massive goals down the stretch for them to keep their season alive. And uh, hopefully he can, you know, continue on that trajectory because he looks like he could be someone who might be good for 40 tucks a year if he can play like that on a regular basis. Meanwhile, we were robbed of Sidney Crosby's brilliance coming into the playoffs because as every bit as good as uh, Lucas Raymond's been for Detroit down the stretch, Crosby even better for the Pittsburgh Penguins. That's the only thing that I regret not being able to, because I don't yeah. think Pittsburgh really deserved to make it based on their overall body of work. We already talked about like kind of, you know, they, they, I know they finished strong, but like as, as a whole, like when you get into the double digits and the OT losses, I know I kind of joked about it with the Islanders, but I do think that that eight, one and one rush with the new coach anyways, off topic, but I just think the Penguins over the course of the year didn't do enough. And, underperformed i still can't believe how bad their power play was and i think that that really had an effect on why they're not playing into the end of april dude it made no sense no sense for that Thir- to have 31st any, mikey it like, finishes the year 31st place 14.6 percent power play only the flyers who were also in it somehow with the terrible power play um you know it's it's yeah it's it's unfortunate like they've got the final game tonight against the Islanders and it's now meaningless, unfortunately. Um, but you know, it's, it's so bizarre. I'll be curious to see what happens over the off season. You know, we saw Don Granado get let go in Buffalo. Kyle Dubas has come out and said time and time again, how, you know, Mike Sullivan's this guy. We know that uh, Sidney Crosby loves Mike Sullivan, but I will be curious to see, like he's been there for quite a while now. He's there, uh, when they were winning their cups back uh, in the mid to you know 2010s, so I wonder if you know after missing out, if there's going to be a conversation had between Dubis and Sullivan about his future going forward. That's that's going to be a conversation that's going to be happening in Pittsburgh over the next couple of days, I'd assume. Mike uh, Sullivan took over mid-season in 2016, went on to win the Stanley Cup that year and next year. However, only has one playoff series win since so it's it is a very good point and you mentioned it as well um you know or uh, you have in the past where uh, gms like their guys and kyle dubas came in gave it a full year they fell short you wonder if he's gonna look to one of his guys um uh, potentially i know sheldon keith is the guy for him but still employed and doing well of late with the toronto maple Leafs. but i'm curious yeah if there is a move there as we can wrap up the show with the buffalo sabers who fired their coach Don Granado, and that to me was super surprising from one standpoint and then not so surprising for the other. Didn't he like just get there? Wasn't this his second season? Uh, no, he's been there for a couple of years, I believe. Um, but they had actually given him an extension uh, like two years before his contract was up and that extension kicks in next year. 
And he's mm. not even going to be with the team. So it's one of those situations. We're now going to have to double pay coaches for a couple of seasons. But, you know, I, I really love that we saw Don Granado do with this group last year. You saw a lot of players take a big step uh, last season, but it seems like it just, for whatever reason, did not uh, come to fruition this time around. I, I'm not sure why, uh, you know, the, the team struggled to gain any momentum this year. Goaltending was a big issue. We knew it was going to be similarly to the New Jersey Devils. And, you know, towards the end of the season, that Lucan and started to show up, but they're hoping Devin Levi in the future can do the same. I will be curious. It sounds as though there could be more changes made to this group in the offseason, though. That might be one of the more intriguing spots to watch throughout the summer. And we will do just that. The Sabres join the likes of the Ottawa Senators, St. Louis Blues, New Jersey Devils without a coach and that are unactive. And then or that had interim coaches and that are unactive. And then the Los Angeles Kings are in the playoffs with an interim coach. So we will see how those five teams are going to address their head coaching position this off season. And could there be more teams to come? Hope you enjoyed today's show for more. Go check us out at locked on senators, locked on Maple Leafs. We'll be back next Wednesday. The playoffs will be well underway And we cannot wait, Mikey, as this is the best time of the year for the National Hockey League. Does Matthews hit 70 tonight? As people are listening to this, already likely that he has. So, yes. Why? When's this going up? Hours before game time. Sometimes people listen to it the next day. Ah, Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Hopefully he hits 70. Uh, The Leafs Leafs are hoping that that happens. If you're listening to this afterwards, I suppose. He's that good, and it's it's awesome. We get to watch him, McDavid, doing his thing. Kucherov could get to 100 assists tonight. That's been a quiet story. We could, we'll could we do plenty of shows on the awards and the Hart Trophy, clearly one of the most contentious yeah. at the top. Four guys really could, could easily win it. Um, I'd even go so far as to say five, but it's it's awesome, the company that's at the top of the league. It's in good hands going forward so absolutely absolutely it is and most of those guys are all four of those players that we talk about going to be competing for lord stanley's mug it all starts this weekend saturday uh we'll see the first puck drop for the stanley cup playoffs i can't wait to break it all down with you the first couple of games next wednesday pal that's mike DeStefano, locked on maple leafs i'm ross levitan from locked on senators we're a part of the locked on podcast network your team every day